Right. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for walking us through that <coughs> and the stats that you share. Of course, you know, no one can um, hide away from the fact that the kind of imprint that Pakistan has in terms of its climate um, you know, contributions to the, to the climate change, it's minimal. Uh, but on the side of receiving end, Pakistan has received the brunt of it this year. And this is uh, going to continue, and we're going to talk about it later uh, in the podcast. But um, I just want to kind of like draw your attention to something that you kind of spoke about when you mentioned uh, UN Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres, and he visited Pakistan. And he also kind of declared that Pakistan is, the country is on the verge of a public health crisis, given the waterborne diseases and food insecurity, rightfully, that you mentioned from the, you know, it's an agrarian economy, the crops fields have been destroyed. There's this whole lives and livelihood crisis um, that Pakistan is going through. And because our topic for the day is global response and international community definitely has been talking about it a lot, you know, you've, whether it's Twitter, whether it's on other mediums, uh, there has been a lot of support uh, coming in from presidents of different countries, heads of states. Uh, but I just want to learn from you the rehabilitation, the mitigation, and the adaptation framework where, from where we're looking at it. It's massive. The scale's massive. It needs an ample amount of support uh, coming not only from national level, from the government itself, Pakistan, but also internationally. So what are some of the plans that the government will be pursuing in terms of kind of navigating the situation they're currently in? And do you think that the global response is enough? Well, uh, uh, I, I'm, first of all, I must thank for uh, the invaluable, important support that uh, we have received from our friends and partners from around the world. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, mobilized our domestic resources, uh, our own people, you know, who are uh, quite uh, good at charity and are known uh, for uh, being generous, you know, have also come forward uh, in, in helping those that need uh, that help and support. But frankly, you know, the size and scale of what we face is, is, is absolutely beyond uh, Pakistan uh, to to face on its own. Uh, we have actually uh, come up uh, with a post disaster uh, uh, needs assessment. Uh, but before I, I speak about uh, the post PDNA, even before that, you know some of uh, the relief and rescue uh, activities also uh, attracted uh, a lot of international attention. The United Nations came up with the original flash appeal of about 166 million, which it subsequently revised to about 800 plus million. Uh, while the pledges actually for the first appeal were pretty significant, but unfortunately for the second one, so far as I understand, it is still not uh, uh, there. And, and that's really where the challenge is. You're right in saying that the media has been looking at it uh, and has been reporting quite extensively. But then, you know, the bandwidth when it comes to international media's attention is, is really very narrow. Mm -hmm. So the speed with which this crisis comes to the front is also uh, results in an equal, equally swift uh, disappearance from world's attention. And that's where really our challenge is. Uh, because I think when it comes to relief and rescue, uh, if, and if I were to look at the numbers, you know, because uh, like for instance here in Brussels, you know, I mean the European Union is actually uh, one of the most uh, significant uh, contributors and donors for which we are really very grateful. Around 130 million uh, dollars have been similarly United States, China uh, and, and a number of other countries have also uh, contributed. But but it's really, I think, uh, and for that, uh, uh, looking at the size and the scale, a lot is needed. And not just uh, while the relief and rescue is continuing, I think we are now at the same time uh, focused on uh, our uh, uh, you know, reconstruction and rehabilitation needs also. And the PDNA that the government of Pakistan and the planning ministry has uh, issued actually lays out the extent of damage. You know, 2.2% of our GDP has been wiped off mm. uh, with about a uh, little over $15 billion of damages 
around around the same amount, about $15 billion of losses. And then another $16.23 billion required basically to rebuild and reconstruct in a, in a, in a climate resilient way because we would want to basically rebuild. Uh, and uh, bearing in mind, and then as you also rightly pointed out, that we are an agrarian society. And agriculture is actually one sector which has been affected the worst, you know. And then agriculture is also uh, the sector from where we draw all our cash crops, you know, that are then used as uh, the source of, uh, for us to earn our foreign exchange also, and, and they impact uh, our ability to export also. So mm -hmm. this sector has been hurt. Uh, the most, and, and uh, bearing that in mind, you know, initially in the relief and rescue phase, government clearly came forward with uh, this relief package, which involved around 70 billion rupees, where every affected family was provided with about 25,000 rupees of support, well, which is really, I think I would still say that it is uh, insignificant because 2.2 million homes Houses have been destroyed, you know, around 1.2 million livestock was lost, you know, and livestock was also something that the farmers use as collateral, you know, to get. And what was worse that because of the floods, you know, even the seed stocks were basically swept away, you know. So the government has now come up uh, with uh, probably uh, the highest, uh, we call it the Kisan package, and if I were to translate that into English, it is the farmer's package. So this package of support for the farmers uh, basically aims at helping them, you know, in, in procuring seeds, uh, helping them in, in, um, uh, in procuring, in, in getting water, tube wells, you know, in getting subsidized or rebated uh, tractors from abroad. So in total, the government has allocated around 1800 billion, which is about 1.8 trillion rupees uh, of this special package to help the farmers, to help the agriculture sector, which was hit the worst. Mm. Uh, that's one part. And then the infrastructure building also. And that's where I think Pakistan uh, would look to our friends and partners, you know, particularly here in uh, the European Union where Global Gateway Initiative is, is, uh, is an undertaking uh, where, you know, Europe uh, mobilizes both public and private sector financing, you know, for infrastructure-related projects across uh, the globe, and, and the initial projections are about $300 billion. And I think some of it, you know, rightly, Pakistan deserves to get that kind of investments, you know, because we will have to, as I said, that uh, transport, roads, railway infrastructure, all of that, you know, that is damaged or destroyed or impacted negatively will have to be built over the next, because our economy clearly has been pushed back by about 10 years.